Uh, okay, so last week, Chris, we talked about movies that we could only watch a little bit, and there was some movies that we could watch all the time. Um, whether and the movies that we couldn't watch, whether it had to do with tone, uh, whether we didn't like it, um, and one of the movies that came up pretty consistently in our conversations that we were having on the show last week, um, and also on Twitter, was Requiem for a Dream. How mm -hmm. hard it was for people to watch that movie, and when we were talking about you and I were basically talking about what a great conversation we had had and, and loving uh, everyone else having the conversation as well. Um, we were both a little bit surprised that that was a movie that everyone seemingly all enjoyed, but then mm -hmm. um, also wouldn't go back to. And one of the things that I mentioned in um, when we were talking about, you know, months ago when I had seen Top Gun Maverick, how I couldn't separate Jennifer Conley from her role in Requiem for a Dream and her role in Top Gun Maverick. I can't, I couldn't see Jennifer Conley. I could only see her character from Requiem for a Dream. And their conversation kind of molded into memorable performances and how a, 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 an actor can become a character that they play, where that's the only thing that you see. So in, in a couple of different ways, there are... There, there's a good way to look at it saying this person is like, I'm, I'm thinking about Bruce Willis as John McClane. That's a, a memorable performance where you only see, like I, I can see if some people only see Bruce Willis as John McClane or Johnny Depp as uh, Captain Jack Sparrow or, or something like that. So maybe just, you know, what do you, what do you think about the idea of, a, a, of an actor becoming their character? And if there are some for you specifically and guys, let us know in the comments as well, what your thoughts about, um, an actor taking over a role mm -hmm. where it's, 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 it's memorable so much in a good way that, you know, they really sold you on it and that's the character or if they're in a bad way, you know, Chris, what do you think about, you know, an actor and uh, mem memorable performances? Well, we don't mean like typecasting also. No, no. We, we don't like, mean something like that. Like this guy's always in action movies. Like for example, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Or, or, or the right. Or, or, yep. Yeah, we don't mean like, oh, they're action. No, like, what is a role, a performance that sticks with you, and that's mm -hmm. what you go back to and think of that actor. Right. Um, I think that it, it's an interesting thing because that's, I believe, when the actor is doing their best work, when it really right. cements them as that's the character you go mm -hmm. back to. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's a big deal because there's a lot of actors who play roles, and I mean, we, there's hundreds of movies every year how many of these performances really stick out you know and that's even with the actors we all love how many like one of my favorite actors is christian bale how many of his performances really stick out to me two of them you know so that's that's kind of the thing i see it as and then mm -hmm. there's some actors who every movie they make is memorable their performance you know but an example again let's say christian bale when i think of him i think of Bruce Wayne, of course, but then I also immediately go to American Psycho. I yeah. love him as Patrick Bateman. Mm -hmm. And that's usually where my mind stays with him, doing the, the dance in the white coat or <laughs> when he's running with the chainsaw. That's uh, where I yeah. go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite quotes is when he, he's just like, you stupid bastard. I just love it. Yeah, you love that. <laughs> I do. So that, that's, that's one of my examples. In a good way, because we all have the bad ones, too. We'll get to that. Yeah, so maybe let's stick with good ways, and maybe we can think of something that uh, that's on the other side. One of the things that I find memorable about Javier Bardem is his role as Anton Sugar in No Country for mm -hmm. Old Men. I see, that's who I see as, as Javier Bardem. Um, I wonder what your thoughts are about James Bond, though, and specifically Daniel Craig. You know, Daniel Craig specifically now with his um, um, uh, Benoit Blanc, actor mm -hmm. and then obviously is as, as, as um james bond do you and the idea of uh, actors having two roles that can cohabit the space at the same time which is i think is a um a unique thing that daniel craig and maybe we can talk about and you talked about it with christian bale you know batman and and um patrick bateman but you know the idea that they can also do two at once and that's who i see daniel craig as now if i close my eyes i don't just see Dan daniel craig as james bond i see him as benoit blanc as well no, it's, for me, it's Bond. Mm -hmm. For me, it's Bond because that's just more important to me. 
Yeah, I, I love Ms. Benoit Blanc, sure. Blanc, and I love the two Knives Out movies, but mm -hmm. Bob is like ingrained for me. <laughs> it, you know, you could inject that into my veins. I love it. <laughs> and he has three of my favorite Bond films out of the the whole franchise. Sure. Yeah. You know, the, the, so to me that that's the damn quick I think of. I don't mm -hmm. think of him in the jacket. That's for sure. Hmm. Which is a good role from him, but it's not where I go. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, he, Eric just brought up one here with um, Patrick Stewart. Um, he's got two. He's got Jean oh, yeah. Card and Charles yeah. Xavier. I think that's a great example, and that's one that's touched different generations of people as well. That's it. Like some people may only like if I ask my mother, who is Patrick Stewart, she will say Jean Luc Picard. If I ask my wife, she she might say Charles Xavier or somebody around that age as well. I think because he's so old, um, um, that that he transcends a couple generations. So I find that pretty interesting about Patrick Stewart. We could also Ian McKellen, Magneto, and uh, Gandalf. Yeah, Ian says, "Why can't anyone except the British pronounce Craig properly? How how do you pronounce it? I'm lost." Craig, 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 Daniel, Craig. Craig? <laughs> Dan <laughs> I, I don't do want to try it, an accent right do it, now. Do it phonetically for us, there, Ian, in the comments. Okay, let us yes. know. Yes. Um, how about any bad any any bad or actors that, in a bad way, have been? Um, I'm giving you a, um, a memorable performance where you can only see them as, as that character? Well, the one I talk about the most, I think everybody knows, is Kevin Bacon in Sleepers. Can't You're stand right. him. Um, mm -hmm. Ashton, Ashton Kutcher is another one. I do not like Ashton mm. Kutcher. I mm -hmm. see him as the dude wears my car guy every time. Right, yeah. Can't can't get past. I, I'd love to, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Just, it doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Um... Those are probably the worst two on my list. Hmm. How about yours? Yeah, so I have Jennifer Conley on mine, but I also have Hilary Swank from um, uh, Boys Don't Cry. Oh, that's a good one. Um, so mostly mine have to do with how hard their roles are and the the emotion that I get. That I get just the idea of like, if I... Yeah, like in specifically in with Jennifer Conley's, like she couldn't be happier in Top Gun Maverick. She couldn't be having a better time on that boat and you know owning her bar. But I just all I see is the horrible, terrible things that happened to her in Requiem for a Dream. And the same thing with Hilary Swank and Boys Don't Cry. You can see her see her in Million Dollar Baby. Obviously, bad things happened to her in, in that as well. Um, but just something about Boys Don't Cry that's just ingrained in my memory. Um, bad, when bad things happen to actors in movies, that's 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 and and because they're so good, like Hilary Swank in, in Boys Don't Cry won an Academy Award. Mm -hmm. um, Jennifer Conley, I think, is very good in, in Requiem for a Dream as well. So it helps and hurts with how good the actor is doing, um, how, how good of a job they're doing in the movie that transcends all their other roles. I keep thinking of that comment from our friend Norton Sinclair on the thread about rewatchability specifically. <laughs> <laughs> I keep going to that. Um, we got some comments here. So uh, Eric said a lot of the Trek actors are like that. Hmm. You know, the, the memorable performances. Uh, Grab says my wife hated Rashida Jones for the longest time because of her playing Karen on The Office. It took her three <laughs> seasons to open up to her on Parks and Rec. Hmm. I'm not sure it's always the quality of the performance. Sometimes it is just the actor. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil says off the top of my head, Donald Pleasance, Doctor Loomis. I agree with that one too. But that might be because I think that's the only thing I've ever seen him in. Right. I could be wrong. Uh, Joe is with us. He says Meryl Streep from The Devil Wars Prada. I'll mm -hmm. go for that one. I have seen plenty of Meryl Streep, and that is what I think of. <laughs> uh, Zeddy says American Psych was a masterpiece. This was from earlier when he you closed your window. I'm trying that's... to sneak through it. Emmett's window, he just locked me out. It's cold as hell outside, man. <laughs> Chris oh, is, is yeah, he, he's pissed off because I moved that Batman Beyond box and he can't see it. I so was he, looking, yeah, I don't see it either. He's trying, he's trying to jump in through the window to get it. <laughs> Poor guy, one day. Uh, Nicholas Cage raising Arizona. When hmm. I think Nicholas Cage, I my mind goes to face off. Hmm. Just because of how over the top he is? Yeah, that to me is like, <laughs> yeah. unless we're talking the unbearable weight of massive talent, right. that is like peak Nicholas Cage to me. Face mm -hmm. off. Also, I love Con Air. Put the bunny back in the box. It's great. Of course. By the way, Renfield comes out in two months. Everybody get excited. Oh, man. Chris is, Chris is jonesing for that one. I am sorry. Did you see the Empire 
magazine cover. Pretty pretty nice covers. Yeah, very nice. I love it. I'm excited. <laughs> Keanu Reeves and Bill and Ted. I cannot take him serious in a role. Uh, That's like that Ashton Kutcher thing, right? Like Ashton yeah. Kutcher has done other stuff since then. Keanu Reeves has done other stuff since then. The only thing, the interesting thing about Keanu Reeves though, is he's headlined multiple franchises since Bill and Ted. For sure. He's even. I mean, we'll, we'll count Speed because there's a sequel that goes on in it. But Speed, mm-hmm. The Matrix, um, John Wick, of course. Mm-hmm. When I think Keanu, I my mind now goes to John Wick. Before it was mm-hmm. Giant Mnemonic, which is a movie I don't like. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Joe says Patrick Stewart in Green Room. What is Green Room? Uh, it's something about Nazis and what's his name? Um, I can't remember the actor's name. He was in the new Star Trek movies as Chekhov. He died recently. Um, Anton Yelchin or Yelchin. Oh, or, I, yeah, he's, he's, I, he's from Fright Night. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, he, okay. he's in that as well. Him and his band or something, they go to a, a gig somewhere and there's a whole bunch of neo Nazis. Anyways. Who is Maverick? Zeddy, I meant Tom Cruise. Zeddy's having a conversation with himself. <laughs> <laughs> Cook says Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio will always be Jack Dawson to me. Mm. I think of him as Jordan um, from Wolf of Wall Street. Jordan Belfort, yeah. Yeah, that, but I also love that movie. So mm-hmm. I love Titanic too, though. Titanic is a great film. <laughs> it's not a rom-com, but it's close, sort of. Mm-hmm. Tragic rom-com. It, it's a rom-com. <laughs> he says, Jared Leto will always be the Joker. That's a special kind of performance right there. Mm. I don't know who's if Jared Leto serious. to me. Yeah, I don't know who he, I don't know who's, who's Jared Leto to me. To me, he's the Joker. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe, the, maybe the pretty boy from Fight Club. Maybe that's who Jared Leto is for me. Getting his face beaten it. up. Didn't know he was in it. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> Jim Carrey, Jeff Daniels, and Dumb and Dumber. Oh, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I, I'll go with that one for Jim Carrey too. Nice. I think of Truman Show when I think of Jim Carrey. I think of Dumb and Dumber. He's a race mm-hmm. uh, Cookie says I've always hate, I've hated Michael Shannon's bug. I'm sure he's a great guy, but he plays a great villain. He does, and his face is so expressive. Like yeah. I buy that he's a serial killer, but like a Buffalo mm-hmm. Bob type. Where's the Bill? <laughs> Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. Okay, Buffalo Bob was in the parody then. Yeah, Buffalo Bill. <laughs> I could buy him. Buffalo like, Bob. Yeah, that was a parody. I forgot what it was, but there was a parody. His name was Buffalo Bob. I can't remember. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, he he gives off serial killer vibes, and I, I I'm there for it. I, I would agree there. Timothy Oliphant is always Raylan Gibbons. Yes, mm. that is what I think of him too. I love Timothy Oliphant because of Justified. I think of him as uh, Seth Bullock from Deadwood. I haven't seen that. I will, though. Mm-hmm. Mark Hamill always looks Skywalker, but probably because he hasn't done much else. He's the I think Joker the, to me. I think of the Joker or his small role on What We Do in the Shadows. He's hilarious. Of course. <laughs> He's funny. <laughs> Christopher Lee as Saruman or Dracula? Hmm. For me, it's Dracula, but yeah. Bias. Yeah, and for me, it'd be the opposite side um, as, as Saruman's or as. Uh, uh, Count Dooku. <laughs> when I think of Nick Cage, I think of Leaving Las Vegas. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Less over the top. More, you know. Same with Moonstruck. He's kind of more of a normal human. Sure. Brando and Godfrey. Yeah. That, I, I, you know, people don't talk about any other role this guy's been in except mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, Colonel Kurtz in Apocalypse Now, I think about. Yeah. Um, she, oh, she, yeah. Mm-hmm. Grab says, I'm not saying he's not good. I'm saying I always think he's going to say dude at some point in the movie. <laughs> I always just going to say, whoa. Mm-hmm. Chevy Chase, I always think of Clark Griswold. Yes. I think that's probably like a, a, a renowned, yes. Maybe a little bit with Fletch. You might get a Fletch in there. But Chevy Chase is Clark Griswold. Why does no one think of The Invisible Man or uh, what was it other movie? Nothing But Trouble. Have you ever seen that? No. It's it's a weird movie. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember what it's. I think they get stuck in the middle. Him and his wife or something get stuck in the middle of nowhere. Sure. And it's supposed to be like a comedy, but it has uh, like horror elements to it. Right. <laughs> it's really weird. I think of DiCaprio as Arnie and what's eating Gilbert Grape. Mm. That's a great one. Yeah. I could have drowned it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Michael Douglas is Gordon Gecko. That's it for me. Uh, yeah. Jack Nicholson, Jack Torrance. I think of the Joker. Or I, I, I really of, like as good as it gets. 
I was just gonna say his character from as good as it gets. I, I think of I think of uh, the Joker and then of the character from as good as it gets too. Leslie Nielsen, airplane or naked gun? Naked gun for me. Dracula then loving it for me. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Robbins, I think of Shawshank, automatically of Shawshank. I think of Mystic River as well for Tim Tim Robbins. Nothing but trouble, yeah. So somebody else has seen it but me, uh, or along with me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember it very well. It's been a while. There's a musical thing at the end, you know, that, that doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. I see. I think, guess most people see Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. I kind of think of him more in Swiss Army Man now. Oh. <laughs> Just me. Walking mm -hmm. and King of New York. Why doesn't anyone think of that movie? I can't even think of right now. I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out. Somebody will help me. <laughs> what about um, roles that are so memorable that you can't see another actor playing that role? Do you have any of those off the top of your head? No, I really don't feel that way about any role because I always <laughs> think the character is bigger than the actor, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. Like even if we're talking about. Um, Batman or James Bond, for example, or mm -hmm. uh, whoever, the character is always bigger than the actor. So I don't really have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Do you? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on the whole as well about the character being specifically in big IPs, like Batman, Superman, anything like that. Um, for smaller roles, it, it would be, it's funny when you look at um, a lot of those deep fake videos where they put different faces on um, mm -hmm. on actors sometimes. Those are interesting to see, uh, you know, kind of a, like a, a what if. Um, but it's it's hard to say no one can do a role because you don't know if the other person could have done the role because mm -hmm. they didn't do the role. So um, I get the sense. Uh, I get that sense for sure. Well, it's like the idea. Um, Jonah Hill was up for the Riddler and the Batman. Hmm. We don't oh, know. What I remember that, been, that. Yeah, we don't know what that right. would have been like. But right. Reeves wanted him for the Penguin. Mm. How would that have worked out? <laughs> so <laughs> weird. So yeah. so different. Uh, yeah. Very different. Um, another big one for me that I, I know this might be interesting for some people. When I think of Joe Pesci, I don't think of Goodfellas or any of his pop, like those kind of roles. I think of my cousin Vinny. My cousin Vinny, yeah. <laughs> That's really memorable for me. And that I'd like to see someone else try. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, totally fair. Um, all right, guys. So that's our thoughts on uh, memorable uh, performances. If you guys have any thoughts, let us know down in the comments. Uh, about some of uh, your favorite uh, memorable performances.